Got a little bonus show action. This is parts of my appearance on Wednesday's edition of the Max Roundtable with Doug Amos up in Montgomery. I want you to just give us the Zach Blackerby opinion of where we are roster-wise with Auburn, mm. uh, where you think the portal in this last window could assist this roster, which, quite frankly, I think is better than most people believed it would be at this current time in Hugh Freeze's first stint. Yeah, well, I think they certainly got a nice bump in getting some freshmen that are going to be able to contribute earlier than they thought uh, on early signing day. And I think, obviously, you know, what they did on the offensive line specifically and some other positions in that first transfer portal window were huge. The current state of the roster, though, Doug, I think, you know, it, it depends on where you think this Auburn team can compete. If you're if you're somebody that thinks Auburn should have the ability to, to compete in the SEC or for the SEC every year, I think they're a long way off. I think this is a six or a seven win team as it currently sits. And I think if you can go out and get a quarterback or some kind of playmaking wide receiver, which I don't think either of those guys have entered the portal yet, Doug, we'll certainly see what happens over the next few days before it closes. Um, Unless they get one of those guys, I mean, I think I think this is a six or a seven win team. Unless some guys really develop and kind of put it all together that maybe we're not expecting to, but you know, Aub Auburn's uh, Auburn's schedule isn't exactly easy. The non conference schedule is easier, but as far as you know, where the roster is, Doug, I think we've got a long way to go. So, tell me this, and and I have not heard y'all have this discussion. Do you believe? Mm -hmm. And let's stick with quarterback. Do you believe that? If it's not a grad transfer with Grayson McCall, if that doesn't play itself out and he does not end up in Auburn, do you still believe that Auburn starter in 2023 could be a name we haven't really even talked that much about that could surprise us all by entering the portal over the next 72 hours or so? I think um, I, if I had to guess who Auburn's, if Auburn's starting quarterback in 23 is on the roster or not, I would say that he is not currently on the right. roster. I don't feel super confident in that, but if I had to guess one way or the other, I would, I would guess that he is not. Whether it's a Grayson McCall and they figure out the grad transfer stuff, who knows? Um, or like a guy like a Casey Thompson. You know, Nebraska had a few guys enter the portal today, which probably lessens the likelihood of that happening. But you know, he, he's a name that I've seen some smoke with. But, you know, just we're also new to this transfer portal era. If you're a grad transfer, you're not constricted by the portal that's uh, right. windows. And so, you know, I think that's a little bit of a misconception as far as all this goes. But I do think, I do think the, you know, the NCAA committee moving the window up because originally it was May 1 to May 15. And they moved it in October. And nobody noticed. And then like a few weeks ago, we're like, oh, okay, this is about to open. <laughs> I think them moving it up from April 15 to April 30th. I, I don't know if that really helps the student athletes um, because I, I still think there's going to be a lot of these kids that are in situations where they're waiting on, you know, answers about guys in front of them. If they're going to grad transfer or not. And like nobody's graduated yet. They're all graduating like in a week or two. And so I, I am curious to see what they do next year regarding the timing of this window, because Grad transfer kids don't care, right? Because they're going to grad transfer in a month. But you know, as far as as far as guys that are kind of in a situation that maybe you know their 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 potential starting job may be in question or something like that, I think uh, I think it may be a little unfair to them, Doug. Do you think Zach that that Hugh Freeze and and the OC Montgomery vetted Chance Nolan uh, out of Oregon State took a look? Uh, gave serious consideration to hopefully getting a visit with him because he ended up committing to TCU. I'm just curious where he was. I did hear you mm -hmm. and Daryl bring his name up a few weeks back. So how do you think that played out in the Auburn coaches offices? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think, uh, and I've got a source that did confirm that they talked. So, you know, that I think that is something but I don't know if Chance Nolan offers anything different than you know what you already have right. on the roster. I think he's fine, but like I think Robbie Ashford can be fine, and I think Robbie Ashford's upside is way higher than a, than a Chance Nolan. So I bet this is just a gut feeling and reading in between the lines of a little bit of a conversation I had off off the record with someone. I just, if I had to guess, I think Q Free said, "Hey, you can come be a backup here." And I don't think he was interested in that. That's just my gut reaction, Doug.
And I tend to agree with you. Now, over the last 24 hours, I admit I've been a little nauseous, uh, as has Luke Robinson. Uh, and, and when I read the name Tyler Buckner, uh, having seen some tape on him, uh, literally, folks, if if you need to be scared and you don't like to watch horror films, go watch the Notre Dame Marshall film uh, from last year. That'll take care of it for you. Uh, yeah. This guy just doesn't fit, man, at either Auburn or Alabama. Yet I see something today that says it's confirmed that he's going to visit both. Okay, is he visiting Auburn? I saw I saw a tweet that he was planning on visiting Alabama that Saban wanted him in. I didn't I didn't see the Auburn. Report. Well, and, and and it literally is. Uh, I guess it's not fair to say it's a report, but but here's the deal. I'll read sure. you the tweet. Okay, uh, and, and it comes uh, from uh, Tom Loy, who's with twenty four seven, has yeah. about forty four thousand followers, uh, and he said. That uh, it, it, I'm now told, I'll read you the tweet. I'm now told to keep an eye on Alabama and Auburn as it relates to a potential landing spot for Notre Dame quarterback Tyler Buckner. Wow. Visit should occur soon. I, I couldn't believe it when I read it. Yeah, I, I don't know if I necessarily get it. And I don't know a whole lot about this kid. Um, when he entered the portal and, you know, Every anytime a quarterback enters the portal, you know, Auburn fans are talking about it, Alabama fans probably are too. And I'm like, okay, who is this guy? And then I looked at him like, oh, okay, I guess I have watched him a little bit, but because we all watched that Notre Dame Marshall game because that was wild. But in the South Carolina bowl game, too. Uh sure. Yeah, sure. And so it's like, okay, you know, there maybe there's something there. Maybe it just didn't work as far as like the scheme at Notre Dame, but still, like when you talk about bringing in a quarterback and kind of relying on upside to be the argument it's like well from an Auburn perspective like Robbie upside uh Robbie's upside you know with Robbie Ashford and you know Holden Gariner's upside I think is just as good if not better so yeah I, I don't know I don't know and you know with him visiting Alabama you always just kind of wonder like is Saban just trying to send the message like <laughs> is that is that really something is that really something that he wants or is he just kind of saying hey like our quarterback situation maybe isn't as good as we would like it to be but I wonder if 247, you said that guy that you read the tweet off of was from 247, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bre- Tom, Tom Loy. Tom Loy. So I saw Brandon Marcello kind of quote tweet something and say the same thing this morning, saying like, I would I would expect both Auburn and Alabama to be interested in this guy. And I'm like, hmm. So I wonder if 247 got some kind of note, Doug. So I want to ask you this. Uh, nobody's closer to that program than you. You have a lot of insight and a lot of sources within that program. Uh, so I'm just going to make some statements and you just stop me or, or confirm or deny. Okay. Uh, I would say that Robbie Ashford and Holden Garner during the regular season last year probably had as little coaching, uh, positive coaching at their position uh, the, as as little as they could have had, agreed or not, with, with the way the Auburn staff was done. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Do you also believe that considering who Auburn now has with Hugh Freeze, who has proven to develop quarterbacks, some quarterbacks that some of us didn't think were developable, developable, and then with Montgomery, the offensive coordinator, that between spring and fall, they're going to get – almost as good a quarterback coaching as as they could could get with, with those two guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've certainly seen that in the past with what Hugh Freeze has done with his guys at Ole Miss. And then Malik Willis is probably his claim to fame. And of course, Auburn fans know him as former Auburn quarterback Malik Willis. That's so right. um yeah, yeah, I I think so. And that was the biggest argument for Hugh Freeze, I think, in the short term. And obviously, the long term was the impact that he was going to have on the recruiting trail. And boy, he's hit the ground running quicker on that than I think a lot of people expected him to. And so, you know, let's think back to his opening press conference. Who was the lone player there that was invited? It was Robbie Ashford. Yes. And so, we'll see. Um, you know, Robbie was the guy with the ones for every drive except for one towards the end of A Day. Um, Holden Gurner got one drive with the ones, but the rest was all Robbie. I think that's something. I think that's um, sending a message to Robbie that hey, you're the you're the leading guy right now, but we're still looking at Holden. And I think it kind of shows TJ like here, this is this is kind of what we think of you. So, um, 
I think I, I think if you're an Auburn person that wants Auburn to do well in 2023 and you're concerned that they haven't added another quarterback via the portal, the next best option is like, okay, well, let's develop the guys that we've got. And Robbie Ashford's ability, I don't think anybody's questioning his ability, but it's just, can he put it all together? But, sure. but one thing, Doug, that I, I don't think is being discussed enough when it comes to Robbie is, you know, this is a guy that battled injury last year. And then he had a reported shoulder issue um, throughout spring and he wasn't getting touched during spring. And so that shoulder is a concern. And, you know, how durable is he? And I don't want to label anybody, a kid, you know, to be like injury prone or anything like that. But, you know, you need your shoulder to play quarterback. And when you're a dual threat guy, you're going to get hit more. What does that look like? Zach Blackerby with me this hour, folks. Get used to it. He is back, man, for his Wednesday visits with us. Barring a, a schedule deal, and we have a new child, schedules change. Uh, <laughs> but next Wednesday, we're thinking he'll be hour one again, but we'll work it out if he is needing uh, hour one to take care of some other things. I asked Daryl this question uh, earlier, and I want to pose it to you and get your thoughts. If, if fill in the blank, the two position rooms at Auburn post-spring that mm. I'm most impressed with are hmm. okay corner i'll go corner because dj james and and, and, and nehemiah pritchett and kay and lee may be the best corner room one through three in the sec when it's all said and done this year so I, i'll go with that i think they're very very good um i'm gonna go offensive line for the other one and i thought you might this isn't me saying they're the second best room they're not the second best position group but I am impressed with what they were able to do over the course of the spring. And Doug, I love that this, the, the way the staff handled the personnel aspect of this, because what have we seen? What do you see all over the place when there's questions at a position group, specifically the offensive line, you see dudes rotate in and out like crazy. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> this staff, they went out and got three, gra uh, three transfers, three experienced dudes. And we saw, we saw Dylan Wade at left tackle. We saw Avery Jones at center, and we saw Gunnar Britton at right tackle. And we never saw them anywhere else, and we never saw anybody else with the ones in those spots. And it's like, okay, that's that's our starting point. There's no reason to experiment or try anything else out. I love that, because I don't think most staffs would have done that. Um, so I think that's great. And then it kind of allowed you know, a natural competition to take place from those guard spots, and you kind of – heard good things about Tate Johnson, maybe moving him from center to guard an extra year of experience helped give him an edge there. And also just the emergence of Connor Lou. A lot of people saw him as, you know, the best center prospect in the 2023 class. And, you know, coach freeze has talked about how he's going to play. He's going to play. I don't know if he's going to play at center unless something happens to Avery Jones, but he's got a solid chance to start at guard. And then, you know, Jeremiah Wright's a guy that they felt good about at that left guard spot. So, I'm going to go offensive line. I don't think they're the second best group on the team, but I, I was really, really impressed with them. What do you think about the defensive line and what's gone on there with the transfer portal? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's deeper, which is good, and, and because this staff is going to rotate a ton more than the previous staff did, which I think everybody agrees you need to rotate on the defensive line. And I think they're going to be good at, at stopping the run. The, what they did at A Day was so vanilla. And sure, they gave up a lot of rushing yards, but most of that was the third team defense. And a lot of it was outside run stuff. It wasn't really the defensive line. They did a bad job at containment. So I, I think I think the defensive line is solid, Doug. But the the biggest concern to me is I don't know where the pass rush is going to come from. I think edge is going to be a position of concern, that Jack linebacker spot that they're going to send. I think they're going to have to rely a lot on Ron Roberts' scheme. Can they confuse opposing offensive linemen and pass blocking schemes? Because until Keldrick Falk turns the corner, but he's a true freshman, you don't see true freshmen really make an impact as far as generating sacks and pressures as freshmen in the conference. You just don't typically do it. I don't care how highly rated there are. It's just really, really hard to do. Not saying he can't do it. I'm just saying you don't see it a whole lot. So 
I don't know where the pass rush comes from, but I like everything else about the defensive line. Is that a position that you think this last portal window that that somebody's really scouring around to see if an edge is is got his name in there that that could pop, pop, potentially develop? Well, they're uh, they're calling all of these edges that that are entering the portal. Anthony Campbell is a ULM guy that they really are going after. Naheem Thomas, I believe, is his name. He was um, he's a Cincinnati edge that was on it for a visit. He was on campus for a visit this past right. weekend. I remember that, yeah. And um, you know, it's down to Arkansas, Auburn, and then Wisconsin. And he hasn't gone to Wisconsin yet. He was saving Wisconsin for last, but that's where his former coach, Luke Fickle, is. So that's always kind of tough to battle uh, when he's already got a relationship there. So I'm not feeling super good about that one, but we'll see. And then there was an old Dominion kid that they offered last night and, and i'm gonna be honest with you i haven't done a whole lot of research on the kid but i am gonna try to get his name for you real quick like uh isaac ukwu i believe is how you pronounce it his last name is spelled u-k-w-u but uh james madison edge isaac ukwu they have offered him as well but so it's clear that they need Somebody, they feel that way because I think after Elijah McAllister, which is who they got in the transfer portal from Vanderbilt in the first window, and Keldrick Falk, I think there's a pretty big drop off before they feel comfortable going to somebody else. You know, the one thing I love about how you run uh, in a um, locked on Auburn, and and I'm I'm assuming your other guys and Zach's in charge of the entire college division of locked on, so. Uh, and apparently recruiting some others like the Braves, looking for a little locked on Braves action. But we'll get back to that in a minute. But yeah. I'm curious, you've always, or at least this past year, had some NIL deals with some guys at, that you would have on regularly on your podcasts. And mm -hmm. that allows you, I think, entry into the program that a lot of media people would not have. Uh, you, you working on that for the fall? What, what's the story there? Can you update us on yeah, guys yeah. That we may be hearing from regularly? Yeah, we have, uh, I've worked out an NIL deal with Jason Jones. So he and I will be connected till the end of, uh, the 2023 season. Looking forward to working with Jason. He comes on the show a, a, a good bit and we'll put up some feature articles on him at auburndaily.com as well. But I think Jason Jones is a guy that, had one of the best springs, just talking to folks close to the program, had one of the best springs on the team, which is uh, which is encouraging because Auburn's going to need that defensive line leadership and depth. But Jason has emerged as a leader on this roster. This coaching staff needed him to be that. I asked Hugh Freeze that at a press conference two or three weeks in the spring. I asked, who, who give me some guys that have been leaders. And he said, Tate Johnson and, and Jason Jones. So there's a chance that he becomes a captain. With media days coming up, I think there's. I think Jason Jones is certainly a candidate to represent Auburn at SEC media days. So I'm excited to, to partner with Jason. Doug, we've kind of got overlapping transfer portals happening right now, <laughs> and I think we both agree that the basketball one has been much more interesting. Boy, has it ever! Uh, and was talking to Luke Robinson about it uh, from an Alabama perspective, and the, yeah. the Jaquan Walton this unfortunate deal, and you just wonder what kids are thinking these days, especially what's happened in yeah. Tuscaloosa, Zach, over the last four months. Uh, you would think that when you're in the town that you would make sure you make good decisions. He didn't, so Alabama's down one. Where's Auburn stand? I know they got a guy in town right now that uh, I think would be an incredible addition to this team. Yeah, Matthew Cleveland, the, the former FSU standout, shooting guard, small forward, if you want to call him that. He's 6'7", so I don't, I don't know if he's a small anything, but this seems like any time, for the most part, any time Bruce Pearl and this staff make someone a priority in their recruitment and they get them on campus, they typically either commit or they commit a few days after. We saw yeah. it with Denver Jones, the FIU transfer earlier in the transfer portal window. And um, I, I think you may possibly see it with Cleveland as well. They also went out and got Chaney Johnson. You know, the, the UAH kid who can shoot the lights out of it, you know, um, had a little bit of a dip last year, but his career numbers are pretty ridiculous from three. So, but Matthew Cleveland, I think, fills a role, especially when there's still questions about what is Alan Flanagan going to do. And um, I, I think this is a guy that could come in and start for you at either the two or the three, which is exactly, exactly what Auburn needs. All right. So tell me about uh, your thoughts about the, the new, 
coach, the the new the guy from uh, Texas Tech uh, yeah. that is now at Auburn. Uh, I mean, this guy certainly has connections. Uh, that should help, I would think, uh, in the recruiting world. Yeah, Corey Williams, you know, uh, coming from Texas Tech. I mean, you talk about consistent and solid basketball programs. Texas Tech is certainly up there. So we'll see. You know, it's funny, Doug. I was sent, <laughs> I was sent a picture um, the morning Corey Williams came into Auburn to interview, and he's eating with <laughs> Bruce Pearl and Stephen Pearl at um at at Byron's down the street and so they were uh, they were having breakfast that morning and I'm like okay and so we're like looking up like who is this guy we we eventually figured out that it was Corey Williams so um kind of a uh, kind of a cool thing there to see a little peek behind the curtain but yeah i mean you lose Wes Flanagan who was a big part of what you did from a recruiting standpoint so you bring in Corey Williams a guy that has done it for a long time his bio on the website says 23 years in coaching so this, uh, I think, I think it's, it's going to kind of be a similar thing that we, you were asking Wes Flanagan to do is to go out and help us get talent and then also, you know, do some coaching, of course, as well. And Corey Williams has done all that at a high level for a long time. How long had it been since there had been a change uh, among the, the lead assistant group at Auburn with, with Bruce Pearl? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. And in fact, you know, I think we talked about it on this show maybe two summers ago. Where we talked about like, you know, okay, Auburn's doing a good job. Why have none of the assistants gone on to you maybe get another yeah. opportunity somewhere? But it, I think a lot of them like where they are. I know Ira Bowman, like I think he like took a break for a little bit to yeah, he did, he help, help like that. a family business or something like that at home. And then he came back a season later, I think. But outside of that, I mean, it's been pretty, it's been pretty consistent with, with the guys that they've got there. And, you know, obviously Chad Pruitt's a big part of that. You and I've talked about him. Um, a ton and had him on the show. Uh, but of course, Stephen Pearl, Ira Bowman, Corey Williams. Yeah. I mean, it's a good group. 